Okay, so what's up guys? Um, it's nice to be here again. Just doing another video. In this video, I thought we'd cover analog to digital conversion on the Sam D21 microcontroller. So in the last video, we covered um, switches and before that we covered LEDs. So we looked at input and output and that's basically, you know, digital input and output. Um, for the next two videos, what I really want to cover is working with analog because what really makes microcontroller special is not only the ability to perform digital input and output, but recently there have been a lot of um, headway into integrating analog on microcontroller devices. So, you know, you have things like operational amplifiers, DACs, ADCs and you know comparators a lot of stuff like that just being you know a part of the device and you know for the cost it's really something that you know you can use a lot of projects for a lot of different purposes so I'm not really going to cover what is analog to digital conversion you know there's a lot of videos on that but basically what ADC is is you know, you take some input from a sensor usually and it's in a analog form, which is to say it's continuous. That is, the, it's a voltage. And as you know, a microcontroller is a digital device. So what the microcontroller actually do is the microcontroller will convert that voltage signal into a digital form that it can recognize and process and perform things like digital signal processing and you know we get temperature data and a lot of stuff you know ADC is a really complex topic and you know um, I think I have enough time to you know really dive into ADC and the types of uh, analog to digital conversions and stuff like that in this video so I'll be looking specifically at using it on the SAMD21 so let's look at the data sheet before we do anything you know it's really nice to take the data sheet so Let's look at the data sheet and see what the data sheet says about the ADC on this device. So the ADC on the SAMD21 um, has 12-bit resolution. So you, know, you can expect a total of 4096 values. You know, it also has support for 8, 10, and 12-bit resolution. What I didn't mention here, um, it's around here somewhere, is that... Um, this device also has the ability to do something called oversampling so you can effectively get you know 16-bit resolution from the device but really um these on-chip adc modules you don't really need more than 10-bit resolution you know usually if you're designing a device that needs more than 10-bit resolution you'll, you'll go for your up for an um, external ic because anything more than 10 bits you're looking at like um 16-bit resolution for like audio applications and for stuff like that it's really better to just use an external you know dedicated ic so um 350 kilo samples per second um you know it's a really general purpose adc you can read a lot of sensor data and stuff with it so this is the um block diagram for the adc so you know, we have registers that store results that perform, you know, post-processing. You know, I really am um, pre-scalers, a whole set of, uh, you know, it's a lot of stuff. Um, there's also a nice internal reference setup for the ADC. So we don't have to worry about that, you know, but it's it's a good pop, it's a good ADC, 10 bits, 12 bit resolution, you know. And all as some of the medical devices um, I've worked with use 12 bit resolution, but you know, 10-bit 10, 10 resolution is good enough for most stuff, so that's what I'll be focusing on. Um, something to note here is that a lot of people have um, problems with the Sam D21 ADC accuracy. And it's nothing to do with, um, with the actual device itself, but it's a configuration problem. You know, there's an article in 2019 that I saw, you know, featured on Hacker Day that stated you know that the adc on the 7021 is lying to you blah 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 
um you know they said it can be something uh, you know like 70 um and they have up to 70 lsbs so um you know all that's come from configuration you know even the, the manufacturer um atmel start and stuff you know i found that the code generated is not really accurate for the adc so we'll walk through step by step as how to get an accurate adc reading from the psalm 21 so yeah um, you know if it, even the arduino team messed up this um you know start and i'm, I'm not sure what harmony i never really used harmony with the psalm 21 but i can speak for start you know, I find it that the ADC code is not really accurate. It's always um, off by a good bit. Let's see how we can configure this. Right. So our application is, is um, pretty simple. What we do is we have a potentiometer connected to the device to pin PA11. And we actually have an LED connected to our LED pin. Um, in this case... You know, it's it's pin A17. So what we have is when we take a reading from the potentiometer and according to, we set a threshold and the threshold is, um, you know, it's 10-bit resolution. So, um, you know, 512, once it's, once it's less than, um, than 512, you know, less than approximately half of the, you know, total ADC resolution, um, we'll keep the LED off. And once it's above that value, then we'll, you know, we'll turn the LED on, you know, once it's over that, that 512 um, bit threshold. So, you know, you know, we have two functions, our initialization function and we have a app run function. In the app init function, we set our LED as an output, you know, we turn the LED off. And in our app run function, we have a function, we have a variable here for storing the result of the ADC module. We have a function for initializing the ADC. We also have, you know, we read a function where we read the ADC channel and we store that result in our variable that we declared. And, you know, then we do a comparison with an if statement, you know, if else if statement. And once the result is less than 512, we turn the LED off. And once the result is more than 512, we turn the LED on. So we'll break it down. Let's let's take a look at, at our code here. So we have our ADC um, header file and ADC source file. In the header file, we have function prototypes. Um, we actually just need two function prototypes. One for initializing the ADC, right? I know we have a nice little, um, documentation here. So, you know, when you're typing, you can see that's what I like about Atmel Studio. We have another function for reading a particular channel of our ADC module. And the implementation is in our source file. So this is this is where the meat of the work happens. This initialization function is the most important. You know, a lot of the um, code on the Arduino Zero and, uh, you know, start and, you know, libraries I looked at on the internet, um, it's an initialization process that they feel, and as you know, I like to use this step system. So step one, step two, you know, step three, step four, step five, and, and like that. I really like that step system. I think I actually skipped that step here, but you know, these are two steps, but. So, you know, in the initialization function, the first thing we do is we enable the bus clock to the um, APBC mask. So, you know, we need to enable the clock to the peripheral in a previous video on clocking. You know, I mentioned that, um, you know, on the ARM microcontroller devices, each peripheral needs to have the clock enabled before, you know, we actually use it. So what this does is this enables the bus clock so that we can, you know, enable the clock to the ADC module. The next step, what we do is we reset the ADC module to its initial settings and we disable it. So if we look at our data sheet and we look at our control A register, we'll see that we actually have this bit here to control the software reset. Once we are, uh, you know, we can manipulate this bit 
So we'll able to actually reset the device and get the ADC back to its initial state. You know, so that, that's what we're doing with this line. So moving along, we need to load in the um, ADC calibration constants. These calibration constants um, you know, are, so are associated with the non-volatile memory. On the SAMD21, we actually have you know, the calibration register in the analog to digital converter module and it's it's really important that you know we manipulate you know things like the bias and um, linearity of the adc register so once we you know we adjust the the calibration constants of the adc module our next step is to set up the voltage reference in order for the adc to operate properly you need to have um you know, have voltage reference set up so that it'll have something to reference to. You know, we have things like our um, gain factor selection and reference compensation and stuff to compensate for. By setting up our um, voltage reference, you know, we ensure that the ADC has a reliable um, source. The internal voltage reference, um, it's, it's actually quite reliable for most purposes, but if you're really doing a lot of... Um, high you know high resolution stuff you know high accuracy you'll you'll probably want to use the external voltage reference you know have uh external voltage reference ic setup or something like that but usually if you require that degree of accuracy you, you wouldn't really use the onboard um adc module it's, it's much safer to use a standalone chip that gives a much higher resolution accuracy and stability and stuff like that so we set up our voltage reference and then we need to set up the averaging and sampling. You know, we want our ADC to run fast, so we take one sample. It's personal preference, but for my setup, I now could we have here one sample is more than enough. And you know, we don't we don't adjust the result, you know, we leave the result as is. It's easier to process. And we set up the sample length, you know, five five samples is okay. Um feel free to ch you know change around these values, experiment with these values if you like, but you know, one sample with five sa uh, sample length of five. You know, it, it works. It works fast enough for most purposes, and it's accurate enough. This is where you know I think a lot of people, um, their code, um, really has the problems from you know setting up the averaging and sample length. You know, a lot of them are got up to here. You know, some of them leave out the calibration constants, and you know, actually configuring the parameters of the ADC. Um, this is where it really boils down to getting your ADC operating accurately. So these are the settings um, I've worked with and they work well. You know, we set up prescaler, you know, 10 bit resolution, no correction. We set it you know, on free run and conversion. Um, you know, we leave the right adjustment. Um, we don't use differential mode. You know, the ADC and this is highly configurable. We can do things like, you know, we have differential mode sampling. We have um, the ability to use interrupts, direct memory access. But for most applications, a simple polling um, solution like given here, you know, this code can be easily modified. Um, you know, when you're now starting out with using this device, it's best to really focus on actually getting the module running, making sure it's working before you actually get into doing stuff with interrupts and dark memory access and stuff like that so we configure the delay gain and then we enable the adc module now that's the first step so you know we, we completed our initialization process this will initialize our adc you know with our 10-bit resolution and you know it'll be fast enough um using the internal one volt reference and it's robust it will work for most purposes and once we have our ADC module initialized, what we really want to do is we want to get into actually reading the ADC channel. So to read the channel, we actually need to manipulate the input control um, register and you know there's a multiplexer there. So we actually configure the multiplexer to um, read our particular channel. Um, this is an important step. What we need to do is um, when we study ADC conversion, you know, we flush the value. So 
So what to do is we actually just flush the um the ADC pipeline and you know the next conversion is started. You know, we do that step, we wait for the ADC to finish its conversion and then return that result, you know, return the result of the ADC register as uh, an integer. I um I really skipped the volatile stuff here again because um you know much way over my 10 minute um, limit I set for these videos but um you know I, this code is, is reasonable it should be get you through to using the ADC BM on the SAMD 21. Um it's it's a lot better than a lot of the stuff I see out there and you know as a beginner I just really want to have stuff working or even an experienced designer um you just really want to have stuff working on the silicon you're working with and once it's working then you'll be able to adapt you know you can convert this to using interrupts or dark memory access or whatever i need to do so once again thanks for watching i'll link this code in, in github so you'll be able to download it play on with it experiment you know using your own projects and that's it guys so um thanks for watching in the next video i'll try to cover digital to analog conversion you know if you if you have any topic you'd like me to cover on the Sony 21 you know a project you'd like to see with this device just um comment below and i'll try my best to work on it so hit that subscribe button and thanks for watching